Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to copy a block of text from something like a document you get or an email. We're going to paste it into our Access database into a text box. All right, just like this. Then we're going to click a button and it's going to parse those emails out line by line and create a record for each of them in your customer table. And here they are right there. And you're probably wondering why there's four here, but there's five emails. Well, one of them's a duplicate. Amicron at Gmail is already in there. We're going to talk about all of this in today's video. Today's question comes from Aisha in Evanston, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. Aisha says, a couple of times a week, I get an email containing a list of other email addresses from my sales reps that we need to add to our lead generation database. Right now, I'm copying and pasting them individually into their own records, but is there a way I can just select them all and add them all in one shot? Looking for a time saver, just like we did in yesterday's video. Yesterday, we covered the split function by pulling part numbers out, right? We got a list of jobs, and each job had multiple part numbers that were in a single field, and so we split those up based on that comma, and then we added those into a separate part table. Today, we're going to do something very similar, but instead of parsing it based on commas, we're going to split it based on lines. Each line will be a separate record. In fact, today's lesson's actually going to be a little easier, slightly different technique, but it's a little easier because we don't really need a record set for this. But go watch this video if you haven't yet already, and also watch this one too, because instead of a record set, we're going to use a little SQL. So it's good if you know how SQL works before watching this video. These are both free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help Free template. And just like we did yesterday, let's, uh, we don't need, well, we can keep you around, I guess. Let's get rid of this. We need a box that we're going to copy and paste our list of records into. We'll just do this. That's our box. And let's call this guy the email box. Get rid of the control source. Get rid of the format. We'll just copy and paste our records right into here. Okay, our hello, hello world button will be our do stuff, right? And then we'll just, for now, we'll put a status down here just to see what's going on. All right, that's our status box. So let's go into our VB code. All right, so we got the stuff in our email box, right? Now the email box, is going to be an email address followed by a VB new line character, followed by another email address, followed by a VB new line character, and so on. So we're gonna use the split function again and split this text up into an array, but we're going to use VB new line instead of a comma, okay? So we still need an array just like yesterday, right? Dim, let's call it the email array as string. And let's blank the status box. I like to blank the status box when we start an operation. Put some, I like to put some blank lines down here too. There we go. Moves it up a little bit. Okay. First thing, if the user hasn't put anything in there, if is null email, uh, yeah, email box, then exit sub. You can give them a warning message. You can say, hey, you didn't put anything in there, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to do. They're, they're your Legos. Put them together how you like. Okay. Now we're going to fill the email array with data from the email box, we're going to split it using the VB new line character. At the end of each line of text, you get VB new line, which is actually, it's actually comprised of two characters. It's character 13 and character 10. It goes back, well, it's carriage return new line feed. That, don't worry about it. It's just called VB new line in VB. So email array equals split the email box by the VB new line character. So now if there were five lines of text in there, you got an array with five elements in it, zero to four. And now we can see that there, our status, there are, all right. How do we figure out how many elements are in an array? Remember from yesterday, you bound email array plus one emails, right? Yes, I know you're supposed to take U bound and subtract L bound. A couple of people have commented on that. I get it. But if you're creating the array yourself, you can pretty much be guaranteed that it's starting at zero because you could have, if you have an area that you're doing stuff with, okay, you could remove elements from the bottom of the area, like remove zero, one, two, whatever. And then your L bound is now two. 
So that's how, I mean, yeah, but if this is an area you control completely and you don't got to worry about other processes changing it, it's almost guaranteed to be zero based. And of course, different languages handle areas differently. C is a bit of a pain, but <laughs> that's why I like Visual Basic. It's just, just easier. Yes, you don't get as much control as you do with some other languages like C, but it's just, it's, it's a more friendly programming language, I think. All right, so let's see where we're at right now. Okay, we got our area fill, we got our items, save that. Throw in a quick debug compile, just make sure it's good. All right, we're good. Close this, close it, close it, close it, open it. All right, if I just said do stuff now, nothing happens because it's null. Let me copy my list from my email and paste it in there and hit do stuff. And there's five emails. That's perfect. All right, now we need a little loop and we can take those email addresses and throw them into the customer table. All right, now if I come in here and if I scroll down, get over there. Okay, scroll down. All right, we got Peregrine Tooks, the last guy, customer ID uh, 33. And notice Amicron at Gmail is on there already. Now I have email address set to indexed, no duplicates. So if there is a duplicate, it won't be added. If you want to change that, change that. If you want to, go ahead. I like email to be indexed so that you don't get the same person in there twice and you don't send them 15 emails with the same message. <laughs> All right, now how do we go about adding each one of these lines into the customer table? Well, that's just an insert into an append query, right? Uh, we need a loop counter variable, so x as long for x equals zero to ubound email array. Next, all right, what do we put in here? This is where we're gonna put our insert into. Some people like do command run SQL, I like current db.execute. Yeah, I still, I, it's on my list. I'm gonna make a video one of these days on the differences between run SQL and execute. There's some, there's some differences. I prefer execute. Insert into, this is where the SQL comes in handy. Customer T, one field, it email. That's it. Next line, values. All right, here's where your double, double quotes come into play, right? Because this, because email, the email address has to be enclosed in quotes. So it's gonna look like this. Double, double quote, quote, and email array, whatever one you're on, X, and quote, 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 parentheses, quote. So it's gonna look like this. Yeah, sorry about those notification sounds. I just got a new phone and I set up some stuff on it and it's, I forgot to turn off the notifications. So that's my bad. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> And no, I'm not going back and re-recording the video because it's a long take. <laughs> All right, so there you go. It's going to end up looking like values and then inside of quotes, inside the quotes, you got whatever your email array for that one is. That, that's the element that you're on, okay? All right, that should be it. Save it. All right, again, quick debug. And if you missed it, it's okay. Debug. I cover this in so many videos. I know that you, those of you who follow me, uh, daily or weekly or whatever, you, you see a lot of the same stuff over and over again. But for the newbies, if you're new, if you're writing code once in a while, throw in a debug compile just to make sure all your stuff's good. All right, ready? Do stuff, boom. All right, nothing appears to have changed because it just happened so fast. But if you go to your customer table now, scroll down, oh, look at that, look at that right there. There's your records, see that? It added each one of those items in there. Um, you might, if you got some extra characters and stuff in there, you might want to throw a trim in here too, maybe like right here, throw a trim in there, All right? That'll trim any leading spaces, trailing spaces. Okay. That's it. And the extended cut for the members, we're going to take it one step further. We're going to assume that your line of text that you get is not just the email address. We're going to throw in first name and last name as well. So we're gonna parse each line out, then we're gonna parse the elements of each line and put those into the table correctly like that. Then we'll also add a contact, a follow-up. We'll add a follow-up to the contact table. Remember in our tech help database, right? Each customer has contacts and you can mark these as follow-ups and then create a follow-up list. So all the new people that you add to your database, they'll show up on your follow-ups list, right? And yeah, the follow-ups aren't really implemented in the in the stock tech help database, but I did put a video together where I cover using those follow-ups because that's in there. The field's in there, but all, I try to keep the tech help database as slimmed down as possible for the purposes of demonstrating stuff. It's enough of a database that I have enough stuff to show you stuff, but there's not too much stuff crammed in there to make it too complicated. 
right? Sometimes when you get a database, this, you know, you look through this list and there's like so much stuff in here. It's like, oh my God, what am I doing? Well, I, I try to keep this nice and simple. That's why all the features that I cover in all these different videos aren't in the sample database. So that's covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all my extended cut videos. And if you want to learn more about working with arrays, I cover them in more detail in my Access Developer 21 class. I'll put a link to this down below as well. So that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members 
get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any Tech Help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.